So, I got this pretty decent stepper motor hat um, off of Amazon from this company called Waveshare that I'd never heard about. And I found it pretty challenging to get started with um, using their instructions. So, I thought I'd just make a quick, like, you know, overview of the overview of the hat. So, the first thing that um, I guess you should mention is this is two DRV8825 circuits, or, or uh, motor hats. Um, so, I ended up putting heat sinks on this one, but if you look here, these are the DRV8825s, these are their capacitors. Um, and then here's the actual uh, DRV8825 outside of that. This is what the circuit should look like. Um, so all that tracks... Uh, if we look back at our stepper motor hat, um, we have two inputs uh, for the stepper motors where you would, you know, connect up your motor and they're right here uh, with these J, I think these are JCT connections or JST connections. Um, or you can go in here uh, through the wires. Um, and then I believe these are outputs actually. So like if you want to diagnostics or something, I don't know. Uh, which, why do you want that? Um, or maybe you want to, I don't know, it doesn't matter. Um, and then your potentiometers are here. So this is my one problem with this thing is it would have been great if they made the potentiometers metal, uh, because it's actually a huge pain in the ass to have to, um, let me show you what, what you have to do. So this motor hat is powered um, with anything between 8 to 24 volts, um, obviously it's going to depend on, you know, what you're powering with the motor hat, uh, what power supply you choose. Um, so for me, I have a LiDAR sensor, um, I want to power the Pi and two stepper motors, so I just did this, you know, quick calculation where I added up, um, how many amps I needed, and it seems like it's probably going to be fine. Oh, um, here's a DRV8825 uh, with everything labeled paper. Maybe I can post that up. I don't know. Maybe I won't. So anyways, let's plug this bad boy in. And I'm going to turn on my power supply. Oh, that freaking beep code always scares me. Um, cool. So it looks like nothing blew up. Um, yeah, so as I was saying, to adjust the, um, so these boards can supply up, I think it's up to two amps, uh, without cooling, they said in the data sheet, um, but the motors that I'm using, which are, uh, NEMA 14s, these only require, uh, what is it, uh, 0.5 amps, um, so you need to adjust the current output of the chip. So to do that, what you got to do is you got to take your little multimeter here. Just everything's falling now. Is that in frame? Yeah, whatever. Doesn't really matter. I mean, you're going to turn your multimeter on. You're going to put it between 20 volts, uh, you know, like you would do with anything. Um, I'm going to touch my black wire to the ground here, because that's a ground. Uh -huh. And then, using my red wire, if I, if I touch the top of these plastic potentiometers, it's not going to give me any reading, which is kind of like defeats the purpose, because usually you like clamp a uh, little alligator clip to this guy and turn the screwdriver, and it's way easier to um, figure it out. But what I found is you actually have to go back here and touch this little teeny tiny contact there. And that will tell you what the potentiometer is set to. So this looks like it's at zero. So I'm going to move it up a teeny bit just to prove that that's what, what you're supposed to do. Uh, where's my screwdriver? So I was working on the bottom one. So it feels like this is moving it. So I'll just turn it up like that. Let's touch it. 
I just whatever. Okay. So yeah, now we're reading one point seven six. So the equation I'm pretty sure is um uh half of what you need to uh your maximum current. So let's go down to point two five. This is incredibly aggravating, by the way. Alright, wow, I got it first try. It's actually 0.25. That has never happened in the history of ever making a video or anything. So that's cool. You guys got to see that. Um, sweet, so that's exactly the voltage I need. So right now, I'm just going to shove this on top of the Raspberry Pi. Um, one thing I didn't realize, and then I'm going to turn this on. One thing I did not realize is, there we go. The, the motor hat's already connected up to the GPIO output pins, um, but they, and they don't like tell you what pins it's hooked up to. Why isn't this on? Oh, um, it would probably help if I plugged in the Pi to see what's going on here. Ooh, I probably should have plugged in the keyboard, too. Well, maybe it'll... Now I'm going to have to probably turn it back off and on again. So, yeah, the 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 motor hat's already wired up to your GPIO out pins. Um, so, like, some of these are, like actually in use right now, um, which, like, it's kind of, I mean, that's how I would want it, uh, so that's cool, but they don't, like, tell you. They do in the data sheet, um, but it, it's uh, very clearly translated from Chinese. Um, they did a great job, uh, but, you know, no, um, it's, a, it's, like, perfect, uh, but it is buried in there that the pins that they're using are 19, 12, and 13 for motor one, I think, um, and then... Let me pull up the code here. Um, 24, 18, and 4 uh, for the other motor. Cool. So now our Pi is booting up. Whoops. Keep turning this off by accident. Find a piece of. Ugh. When I break nothing cool um, all right so I'm gonna log into this bad boy uh, sorry you can't see my password um, step our tutorials December Sweet. All right, so I got the code up. Um, let's wire up a stepper, though. Uh, so I'm going to grab... Oh, this one's already kind of hooked up here. Whoops. Um, that's fine. So I'm going to wire in... Um, according to my stepper's data sheet here, looks like black is A1, so we're going to plug black into A1. Um, red is B1, so I'm going to get B1 in there. By the way, I had real bad luck with DuPont connectors in the JCT connectors, so you might not want to do that. And then I'm going to bet green is A2 because I've done this before. And magic's a lie, nothing's real. And there's B2. Sweet. Okay. And then my step angle here says it's 0.9. So the way I figured out what number of steps is 
360 divided by 0 0.9 is going to be 400. Um, and then 400 times 64 is going to get me 256 uh, hundred thousand. Um, and then that's for two pi uh, revolutions. So, it, or sorry, that'd be for two res revolutions. So half of that would be 128 um, hundred thousand. Uh, so that's what I plugged into the program. So the program um, is interesting. I don't know why you need what. I'm not like good at this stuff. I'm good at computer science. Um, I don't know why you need the wiring pi stuff or the BCM 283 the other stuff. Uh, this worked just fine. Um, downloading the example code, uh, stealing their class that they used for the DRV8825. And then I just set the pins up myself. It's not really that hard. Um, so as I said, in the buried deep in the data sheet, it says that we need 13, 19, 12, 24, 18, and 4. So I set those as outputs. Um, 12 and 4, in the data sheet, it tells you that the enable pin needs to be pulled low for the motors to operate. Um, and if you leave them high, the stepper motor is going to continually heat up. Um, so I just pull these low, uh, initially, um, then the code has this motor direction array. Um, I would refactor that into the class. In fact, I'd refactor all that stuff at the top into the class if I redid this. Um, so we got some setup code here that's uninteresting. Uh, we define a digital write pin, um, a stop function. Our term step function is kind of interesting. Um, basically, we just uh, pass in the direction the steps the step delay, um, and we're uh, setting it to 0 0.005 if nothing is passed in. Uh, if the direction's forward, we're going to pull the um, direction pin low, and if it's backward, we pull it high, um, else we return an error because there are only two directions this motor can go in. It's not three-dimensional. Um, if steps equals zero, uh, return if it's not doing anything. And then here's where the magic happens is for i in range of steps, we loop through, um, and we're going to write to the step pin. Then we're going to delay, and then we're going to pull the step pin low, and then we're going to do a delay. So let's go down here to the driver. Um, so I'm creating two motors because I need two motors. Uh, these are the other pins that I was mentioning. So for uh, A3, A4, B3, B4, um, I'm putting in just like my test amount of turns because in, in this uh, project, I'm going to be doing other stuff here. Um, then I'm just turning. Um, my, my delay is one over my test because I want this to happen in one second. And then I'm going to wait half a second. And then I'm going to turn backwards for one second. And then I'm um, outputting low again to those enable pins just because I'm paranoid. And I'm cleaning up. And hopefully that works. So let's see. So I'm just going to run Python 3 test.py. And. Dun, 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 It's not turning. Hmm. Did I forget something? I don't think I forgot anything. And it was working last night. Um. Fantastic. Do I have these right? A1. It could just be that I didn't screw down these connections here. Um, that's what I'm going to do next, but let's see. It looks like I got these right. A2. B1 is red. I might have lowered the current down too far, but I don't think that's what it was. 
black, green, da, 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 blue is B2. Yeah, looks, looks fine. Um, let me try screwing these down. I might invest in JCTs anyways. Or JSTs or whatever those are. Pretty improbable that this is what it is, though. I think I probably broke something, and I'm gonna have to turn this off. All right, let's see what that does. And it's still not moving. Well, I'm gonna turn this off and look into it. But that's the chip. 